Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we have this thermostat to have a look at. And this is actually out of an immersion heater. And this is an 18 inch uh, long one of the uh, longest variety. And I've already done a video on immersion heaters, so uh, the link to that is in the usual place. But uh, this thermostat is actually broken, and hence that's why I've actually got it, because it came out of an, one that we should still see not working properly. And sent to this one, the contacts have actually welded themselves together. So basically it's permanently on all the time. It doesn't actually switch off when the temperature is reached. So I thought we'd uh, pry this open, have a look inside, and let's see how these things actually work. So here is the thing, and uh, fairly straightforward. It's just a uh, long metal tube here, which goes down inside the actual heater. And then on the top, it's got this plastic piece and the uh, little thing on the top to set the temperature. And electrical connection on this just two, one on each side, so one there and one on the other side. And thermostat is basically just a switch, so when heat is required, the two contacts are connected together, so the heater is powered. And then when it reaches the set temperature, the contacts will open, so those are no longer connected. And in this particular one, the contacts have basically closed permanently, and probably sort of welded closed in some fashion, so that uh, when you put this in, it basically heats up to the maximum temperature. And then what happens also on the top is that uh, this has a separate uh, overheat cutout in it with a little button there. That button will pop out and that will disconnect it. And of course that's it, it then just sits there and doesn't work anymore until you press the reset button as the main thermostat part has failed. Now this doesn't have a maker's name on it, it's a fairly uh, typical example though, 15 amps uh, rated, at, uh, 230 volts or 240 volts in this case AC. And though these have them just on the top, they're normally set to around this sort of 65 mark there. So fairly high, and although they go down to sort of 40, 50 or whatever, you wouldn't normally want to set them there. And if we turn this, you'll see that it doesn't actually click at any point, because so the contacts are effectively permanently closed. So let's see if we can just pry this open and see what's inside. Now these side bits appear to uh, just press upwards and uh, hopefully the lid will come off. So there we have the insides and uh, fairly straightforward. We've got the two terminals here, just one on each side there with a screw terminal for the wiring connection. And this little red piece is just the uh, temperature adjuster. And then underneath here you can see the contact which looks to be made out of copper just those sort of pressed out and folded pieces of sheet metal. And presumably this is the contact at the front here. And as we can see there, that's obviously in the closed position there. Though it does seem to still move, but uh, nevertheless, uh, regardless of the position of the dial, it seems to be permanently in the one position there. So I've actually just cut the uh, rod off of the back there. And so this uh, inner piece here, this sort of steel or whatever rod, will actually go through the hole there. And that comes up on the top here, and actually connects onto the bottom of this plastic piece here, and that just sits in the hole in there. And then the red knob is uh, also located on the top. And essentially, as the uh, thing at the other end of this expands and contracts, this will move in and out. And they're also connected to the plastic piece there. And then as that moves, you'll see it will just click the contacts open and closed as the temperature varies. And of course the red knob on top would adjust the exact position at which that occurs, so obviously that gives you a fairly reasonable control over what the switching temperature will actually be. So that's the top there, and so this goes all the way down to the end, so what we'll do I think is just cut the end of this open. That will be just started to uh, chew away at that, and then we can find out what's hidden inside the bottom here. Right, so the bottom uh, is just basically the tube and it's crimped over this uh, rod here, so hence that's why I got this uh, crimped in piece here at the bottom. You can just see it poking out the end there now, I've uh, actually trimmed it off. And that's the other end. So uh, the actual rod is what does the expanding and contracting in that case. So essentially it's the whole length of the thing, which 
obviously inside the tube. So at the rod, obviously expanding and contracting with reference to the outer, probably brass or something, tube there. Of course, that will just move slightly as the uh, temperature varies a bit. And then that's what we'll press onto the little white piece here, going through and just adjust the two contacts either to the open or closed position there. So simply acting on that central piece and the way that it's uh, formed there, so there's like a spring in the middle, so that it will always spring into the one position there once the uh, rod has removed. Now it's not totally clear exactly how this has failed because uh, this is in the on position or the closed position, so those two contacts there are basically uh, pressed together, but uh, they're not actually welded together as I thought they uh, might have been. And if you press the uh, bit of white plastic back in again, see it will still uh, click open and close. So either the uh, rod here became detached from the uh, plastic piece, in which case when it expanded and contracted it wouldn't actually uh, do anything anymore, because bearing in mind once that's loose it defaults to the on position. The rod has to actually basically pull down on that. Or uh, some uh, issue occurred where the rod was no longer expanding and contracting in the proper time or rate. So, uh, so not entirely clear what the failure mode there was. But I say this essentially just goes inside here, and you see it is a fairly loose fit on the white plastic piece. So it may be that the top part there, which is where that red button thing would have been, either just fractured or broke off, and then hence the load it was spanning and contracting. It of course didn't actually activate the contacts anymore, hence them remaining in the permanently closed position. Now the other part of this is the sort of overheat uh, cutout, which is this uh, little rod here, is the base of the reset button. That just comes through that hole on the top there. And essentially what happens to these is once they've overheated is that the uh, button will pop up, and then it will stay basically disconnected until uh, you uh, press the button and reset it. And that's a safety feature to avoid the tank obviously boiling up and uh, getting boiling hot steam everywhere. So just loosen those there. So this side is simply a metal piece that placed on the top there and obviously connects to the uh, strip there. And that's obviously the uh, one side of the contact. So that's the contact point there and then that's the other side there which is moved by the thermostat rod that comes up here. And this side here is the other contact for the sort of overheat cutout. So there's one side of it and that basically fits underneath that uh, copper piece on the side there. And so this is actually the reset button, which would sort of click it down in the event of it uh, severely overheating. Now it's not entirely clear how this thing actually works, because at the moment it's in the on position, as in uh, pressed down, so that would have to uh, spring up in some fashion. Let's see if we can just remove this uh, top layer. Right, so uh, that's the uh, actual other side of the contact there. Here's the uh, little reset plunger, and that's one side of the overheat contact. And then here's the other side on the other contact. So that would normally be in the closed position. So you'd have that just sort of pressing onto that. And then in the event of it overheating, this will lift and then provide that uh, extra gap there. So of course it's now uh, in the open position. And underneath here we've actually got the uh, overheating part and see it's a separate component from the rest so it's a uh, disc in the bottom there and you can see the other side on the bottom here and it'll be this disc which does the, uh, yeah that's the uh, part there so this disc will flex when it gets to a certain temperature, push up that uh, black rod inside and then that will open the separate contact there so it just breaks the uh, circuit preventing the thing from overheating. So, uh, so it is two completely separate thermostats. So you've got that uh, spacing washer there and then the disc and then that just fits into the bottom plate there and it's just again the fact of this uh, flexing one way and the other. So in that direction it's uh, bending in one way and then that way it bends the other. So it's a very small difference, but enough obviously to uh, open the contact as required. And the rest of it just basically black plastic housing, and again just that metal plate in there to support the bottom of the overheat thermostat. And the tube is simply crimped on the back there. And 
then the other end, of course, uh, has that crimp at the bottom where the actual expanding rod fits in. Let's so have other bits and pieces there. So uh, there we go. This one just seems to have a, uh, a rod inside. Uh, so I thought some of these used to have wax or something in the bottom, but uh, apparently not. It's just a variation on the biometallic strip because you've got the uh, two dissimilar metals, so presumably the outer brass or whatever tube does not expand greatly and the inner one is selected so that it expands at a considerably greater rate than the outer piece. So uh, of course when it's fixed at one end then the top end will of course uh, expand and uh, contract, which is giving it that bit of movement needed to activate the contacts. So that's a uh, immersion heater thermostat, so a uh, fairly simple device, uh, just a question of the expanding uh, steel or whatever rod inside which uh, clicks up and down on the uh, contacts at the top and it appears to have been designed so that the default position is actually on, which uh, isn't necessarily wonderful, but uh, the failure in this one appears to be that either the rod has become detached from the piece that moves the contacts or uh, it somehow come loose at the other end, but uh, obviously it wasn't uh, opening the contacts when it was expanding as they were essentially closed all the time. And they, uh, the new ones do have that additional uh, piece in with a little reset button, mainly to prevent it overheating and boiling up. Older ones uh, didn't have that, so if the thermostat failed in the on position then it would just result in the uh, hot water cylinder literally boiling up and uh, steam and uh, boiling water pouring out of the top and going into the actual supply system in the roof. So a fairly dangerous situation, but so all the new ones have that additional reset part. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.